And now, suspense. I think Monsieur Mergot is at the Café Marguet. I, I think he is very fond of Prix Palamour de Caen. Thank you. Not as a servant, but as one of a family. I call her Aunt Josephine. A week ago, she came from Bayeux to visit her nephew. Oh, yes. Didn't I just read here that she died here yesterday of uh, a heart attack? Yes. Aunt Josephine died yesterday in her nephew's house. But she was murdered. Told you that she'd been murdered? Yes. You see, time and again, my aunt tell me that if something should happen to her in her nephew's house, I should go immediately to the police. Mm. Uh, what's his name? Philippe de Lijard. Mm. Well, she came here to see uh, her dentist. By the way, what is the nephew's profession? None. Once he has his wife fortune, he run through that. Now he's desperate. So he killed her. Well, what was your aunt worth? Four or five millions. Four five million. Had she made a will? Yes. Half of the fortune she will to her nephew. And the other half? To me. Would you uh, join me in some fruit, perhaps an apple, a pear, some grapes? Grapes, please. Why didn't you go to the local prosecutor? That's the normal procedure. I did. You won't lift a finger. Mm -hmm. You know, the family is such an old family. Mm -hmm. But you haven't a shred of evidence. Fear's evidence, isn't it? It is to me because I live in fear. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm next. All the fortune's not enough for him. Now, do you see why you must investigate? Yes, but I have no means of access. I have no excuse to go to the place. I am the excuse. My license. No, I, I'm sorry. Victor McRae? Yes? Monsieur Delegard would like you to come at once. Oh. Red? 
Yes, aren't you? You must go quickly. Go in the back way. The cook. I think the cook knows everything. <laughs> Madame Croisier died? Yesterday, about five, sir. Was she alone? Alone. The attack took place in her bedroom, the Louis XIV room on the second floor. We call it the blue room. One moment, sir. I'll tell Monsieur Delejean. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, my dear uh, Inspector Maigret. Madame? I sent for you because that young woman, a mere servant girl really, has been spreading the most malicious stories about me. Uh, tell me, Monsieur Delijard, were you at home when Madame uh, Croisier died? No, no, I always spend my afternoons at my club. <laughs> Madame, uh, you summoned the doctor, of course. Was it the family doctor? No, he lived too far away. We called a new doctor in the neighborhood, Dr. Leovan. Mm -hmm. Shall we go into the morning room? He lives just round the corner. Uh, Dr. Diavan, that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, the servants? The chauffeur and the maid had the day off. The butler was on duty here. The cook, I suppose, was in the kitchen. Of course, if you care to verify... Uh, if you'll excuse us, my dear. This way, Inspector. Madame. No. Cigar? No, thank you. When we invited my aunt to spend her month here, we suggested that she bring her companion. The house is large enough, and we offered for her companion a small suite formerly occupied by my old nurse. Oh, she doesn't live here anymore. No, no. I settled her in a small cottage on the edge of town. Well, in any case, my aunt flatly refused the offer. She told us that she was looking for a way to get rid of her companion. Yes, but uh, the girl told me that your aunt had willed her half her fortune. Precisely, but my aunt admitted that she had made a mistake in including the girl in her will. Oh? She told us that only last week she had discovered that for two years, under her own roof, her chaste companion had been receiving secret visits from a young man almost every night. So she had a lover? No. No, she was secretly married. Oh. Did your aunt uh, change her will? She was going to, but uh, she died. Are you suggesting that uh, Cecile might have killed uh, your aunt? Oh, there's no question of murder, Inspector. <laughs> Oh dear, no. My aunt died of uh, heart failure. The doctor said so, and the medical inspector has confirmed it. Well, I can see that there is really nothing here but malice and uh, gossip. Yes, but I want the gossip stopped. After all, inspector, a man in my position, you know. Madame! Madame, come quickly! Monsieur! Wait. I was blowing out the old candle just now, and I saw the cook behind the coffin dead. This is the sort of case I like best. A dignified facade, decorous characters, every indication of virtue exaggerated to the point of thought. This is my favorite type of case where it is up to me to tear down the problem inside, to sniff around in the ruins and nose out at last the human beast. The 
most unforgivable of evils, the killer of profit. Dr. Leva, you must forgive me for breaking in on you at this hour, but I am convinced that I have come across a most fiendishly clever murder, and yet you and the medical inspector assure me that uh, Madame Croisier died of a heart attack. She did. Absolutely. <coughs> Had you been called on previous occasions to the Daily Show? No. I am only beginning here. I, I was delighted to be called. At, uh, about what time were you called? Uh, Five? Five. I remember I have, uh, I have a little nurse who leaves here at five o'clock. She had just put on a hat and I was in the very act of kissing her when uh, the phone rang. After you got to the house, exactly what happened? Uh, I went up to the bedroom. Oh, yes, the one on the left. Uh, the blue room, all covered with diamonds. No, 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 on the right. The yellow room. Yellow wallpaper with the uh, circles on it. Where was the body? On the bed. Any marks of violence? Uh, none. But she was in an extremely uh, weak condition. This must have been her uh, tenth heart attack. Would you get that for me, please? Uh, yeah. uh, just one more question, if you don't mind, Doctor. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, could you determine the approximate hour of death? I would say place the time of the death at uh, uh, 4.15. Four? Mm. But I know that she went to the dentist at 4. I know that she wasn't back until 5, and yet you tell me that she died at 4.15. Believe me, I was there at 5.10. If the old lady had died at 5 o'clock, wouldn't I know it? I can assure you that she died within a minute or two of 4.15. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. You were there when the cook was killed. They think you did it. Mademoiselle. Madame, it was not nice of you not to mention your young man to me. By the way, how did you happen to be at the Delijar house when the cook was strangled? Were you afraid she'd tell me something? Is that why you strangled her? Nonsense, I didn't strangle her. He'd been there because I asked him. I knew the cook had a secret. That's the truth. But I came too late. I was right. He was there. I've been to the undertakers. Well, they did not see the body when they delivered the coffin. They didn't see the body. Wait for me right there. It's a very charming canal. Oh, please, Inspector, why are you trying to implicate my husband and me? Tell me, yes. where did you first see the body? Upstairs. Where? In the blue room. The blue room or the yellow the room? The blue room. Then how do you account for the fact that when the doctor examined the body, it was in the yellow room? What? Now, when you saw the body, was it in the coffin? Yes. The coffin was closed? Open. Then you saw the face. You recognized it? Yes. No. Are you certain, are you certain that it was Madame Croisier who was in that coffin? Positive. Hmm. Uh. Get me a copy of yesterday's newspaper. I want the death notices. The main entrance to the Delijar house is on the Rue des Reservoirs. There's also a service entrance on that street. Now, isn't there a back way out of the place? The canal. Mm, the canal. The house backs onto the canal. I, I think there's an entrance right to the water. You think there is or you know there is? I know there is. In fact, that's the way you got in when you went to strangle the cook with this. No, I didn't. He didn't. He could not. Well, why 
How do you know? Just because you're in love with him? Yes, because I am in love with him. I know. Darling, don't be worried. We know we hung guilty. If we could only get into the house. Maybe, maybe there's a wound. And now, arrest this young man for the murder of the cook. Inspector. As for the death of Madame Croisier, you will both be held, informally, of course, until I complete another little errand. Follow me, you. You come along too, miss. Run, darling, run now! Take a look at the body! The night! Is that you? Yes, dear. What is it? What are you going around for? Why are you up? I can't sleep. I'll never sleep. I wish you'd stop going around with that scarf. You'd... Give it to me. Let me have it. Oh, why did the cook have to find... If she hadn't seen him, if she hadn't tried to tell him... Marie, Marie, Marie. Mary, go back to bed, please. You, you, please, Mary, you disturb me. Yes, dear. like this. Monsieur de Ligeard, in all your wasted, greedy life, there was one good thing about you. You loved your nurse. Nurse? What nurse? The many years had passed and you had grown up and your nurse had gone away. Always when you went to your club, 
who dropped by to call her. That's right. He did. He did. She lived all alone in a country lane, and his visits made her very happy. Right up until the day that she died of a heart attack. You've been drinking. I'm inviting you to your nurse's funeral. She had a very weak heart, and she died of a heart attack yesterday afternoon at precisely 4.15. Just what you'd been waiting for to perfect this perfect crime. Impossible. How could I get her here? By canal in your launch with the curtains. You dragged the body up to the yellow room. When your aunt came home at five, she went up to her room, the blue room, where she was killed. A strange doctor was brought into the house, taken to the yellow room where he examined the nurse's body. After he left, the body was removed. The nurse saw all this. Unfortunately for her, she was an honest soul. Madame, may I take that scarf? Yes. Please take it. Please do. to you, but I had to test you. Now, if you'll come with me, we'll go free your young man. Thank you. 